Hey everybody, I am Dieter Bone, and if you are of a certain age, you know that that means that I am the palm guy. I used the Centro, I used Pixie, I used the Pre, I founded PreCentral.net, I was all about WebOS, I was all about palm, and then it died, but now it's back. Not the company, but the name, palm, and it's coming back as this little thing that I was hiding in my hand. It's a tiny little phone to go along with your big, huge honking phone. Well, what's all that about? So this is the Palm phone, and the basic idea here is you don't want to carry around your big giant phone, and so you can have this little weekender phone. And it uses Verizon's dual number system, so you pay an extra 10 bucks a month, and that allows you to have this phone share your phone number and also you know, share text messages so you can leave your other phone behind, which is a great idea, except there's a couple of caveats. If you're an iPhone user, your iMessages obviously won't come over. If you're an Android user, you're going to need to use Verizon's you know, custom text messaging app instead of the built-in Android messages in order to get your messages. The other question you're probably asking is, what's the deal with this phone? Well, it's an Android phone, and the basic navigation works this way. There's a single solitary button on it. You press it, it turns the screen on, you swipe up to unlock it. If you double tap it, it will launch the Google Assistant and it will listen to your voice and you can do voice stuff. And they did that because they figured it's a lot faster, you're gonna to wanna to be doing a lot of voice stuff. Now, there are uh, no soft buttons on the bottom, and so there's this one single solitary button, and it works one of three ways. So if you tap it once, it serves as a back button. If you, if you double tap it, it goes home, and if you long press it, it takes you to this overview screen. They have built in a custom face unlock feature into the camera, but I'm sure it's nowhere secure as Face ID on the iPhone, so you can just use a standard unlock pattern if you want. The screen is 3.3 inches, and it actually looks pretty good. It's not too bad. And, you know, for the basic stuff that it's meant to do, it's relatively fast. Although it is a Snapdragon 435 processor with three gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. So this isn't exactly like a powerhouse in terms of specs. As far as Palm, the new Palm is concerned, you really are just gonna be using a few different apps with this thing bopping in and out. So it can run any Android app because it's running Android 8.1 but uh, really they expect you're just gonna use it for music, maybe a little Facebooking, navigation, you know, that sort of stuff. Really simple kind of weekender phone stuff. Now there is a camera on this. It's a 12 megapixel camera on the back and you know, I'm sure it's no great shakes. We haven't looked at it on a, uh, a big screen here, but on this tiny screen, you know, it looks fine. There's a conference room. And if you wanna adjust volume, you need to go into, you know, the quick settings thing here. Now the other thing I'll notice when I'm in the quick settings things here is there's this palm button. And this is where we start to get into why this is a little bit more like an old palm phone, at least why they claim it is. So when you turn on life mode, which is what they call it, this basically acts as both battery saver and do not disturb at the same time. So when this mode is on, you turn the screen off and no notifications will come in. And in fact, they turn off the radio, so not even phone calls will come in. So this thing should last a very, very long time in this mode. It's only got an 800 milliamp battery in it, but if you have this mode on, the thing will probably just hang out, you know, it's inert forever. The other sort of cute little palm thing is they've made this shortcut on the lock screen where you swipe up and you get this little like graffiti area with four buttons on it, and then you can do a search for, you know, see, run into the clock, or you can jump right into the camera or messaging or whatever. The home screen here, it is just an app launcher. There's not two different things, and it's in this honeycomb pattern. You can, of course, move stuff around, you know, drag it around, install it. And then you'll notice here, I long press on an item, and that brings up shortcuts to jump directly into things inside the app. It's a really underused feature in Android, and I'm really glad they sort of foregrounded it here. And that even works from that lock screen. So if I were to go here and, you know, write an S, It'll jump into different things inside, different shortcuts inside the app. So like jump right into scan inside the camera app, for example, or the drive app. So that's kind of neat. I know what you're thinking. Dieter, is this really a Palm phone? I mean, it's got sort of a Palm logo on it, but it's not running WebOS. And the only really Palm thing about it is that a bunch of other Palm phones have been tiny. And yeah, you're right. Um, you should almost think of this more as like a really big smartwatch than a really little phone. You can't buy it on its own. It's actually sold on like a connected device plan. So it's an extra 10 bucks a month. It's 350 or you can get it on 15 bucks a month on a, you know, installment plan. And 
it can do more than a smartwatch because it can run every single Android app, but it can do less than your phone because, you know, it's got a tiny screen and you're not going to want to spend that much time on it. And that's kind of the whole idea here is this is meant to be a time well spent phone. It's a phone that uh, you turn on, do a couple things, turn off and ignore. And you can even turn on that life mode thing and completely ignore it entirely. So it's sort of like a backup plan to your phone. Is that worth 10 bucks a month? Maybe. Thanks so much for watching. We're gonna have a whole lot more about this thing, including a review when it comes out in November. In the meantime, you should subscribe to the channel now because we've got a whole bunch of Pixel 3 content.